the MK Mental Health Hour with 123 Internet Group. MKFM. Justin Bieber, Louis Fonzi, Daddy Yankee, Despacito on MKFM. Good evening. It's Leah with you for another Milton Keynes Mental Health Hour uh, this evening. We're talking all about Time to Talk Day with John from Arthur Ellis Mental Health Support. Hello, John. Hello. Good Lovely evening. Lovely to see you as Thank always. You. Uh, so if you haven't heard about the Milton Keynes Mental Health Hour, we do this every single Sunday at seven o'clock, discuss a variety of mental health topics. Uh, before we get into our topic of this evening, John, if people haven't heard about the work you do at Arthur Ellis Mental Health Support, can you give us a bit of an insight, please? Yes, so Arthur Ellis Mental Health Support is a um, is a local uh, emotional support service for children, adults, basically anyone over the age of eight. Um, and we are our aim is to set up a, a free children's emotional support service for the children who might not meet thresholds for other services. Um, so at the minute in Milton Keynes, there's around about forty a week. Uh, wow. 40 children a week who, who kind of fit that bracket um, so we're looking to provide support to them and we do that in a variety of ways so um, at the minute the, the sessions are subsidised and we have some free spaces but we want to make sure that that's free for everybody so we use um, or we work with companies who we train in mental health and we do um, support packages for employees and all of that contributes to being able to support these children fantastic and there are various ways that people can support the work that you do at Arthur Ellis if people yeah. want to find out more details on how they can do that uh, all the details on your website yeah yeah people can get in touch through there and um, whether they want to refer themselves their child or young person uh, or if it's a company you want to get involved somehow uh, it's Arthur Ellis MHS dot com brilliant and you're always up to so many great things every week we come in I say that any updates yeah. and there's always something so what's yeah. happened over the last seven days well, we've had so many more referrals. Uh, we're getting referrals every single day wow. uh, for different people. So some people don't necessarily know how they feel and just want some support just to figure that out. Some people have um, long-term conditions that they want to just check in with somebody regularly about. So there's been loads of new referrals, loads of new companies. So we've had a an organization reach out who have uh, a 1,000 children that need support Gosh. so that's an interesting one yeah it's quite a large scale project and that's just in Milton Keynes wow. so they've got a thousand children who need some help so we're going to be working with them to see how we might be able to band together corporate organizations to support us and that charity with getting some help uh, for these children fantastic well I mean you continue to do some amazing things in Milton Keynes and you're being recognized for it I mean last week yeah. we mentioned about the fact that you're shortlisted for the Milton Keynes Business Achievement Awards so well yeah, done so for we, that yeah we, we're we're nominated for business impact in the community and best new business so Very exciting. we're looking forward to that evening that's coming up in March it um, is, yeah. and loads of loads more exciting stuff uh, happening with you guys and you can find out all the details about what Arthur Ellis are up to over on their website um, so this evening we're talking about time to talk day so this is coming up early February isn't it it is yeah so it's on February the 6th and it's a national campaign run by uh, talk for change so it's a day where it's got a real emphasis on reaching out it's okay to talk and trying to break down that stigma of anyone that's experiencing issues with their mental health so we wanted to use this week to discuss how people might want to do that because it's all right saying encouraging people to reach out but maybe people don't really know how to do it or how to talk about what they're going through so we've got the wonderful dr aj yates here um who has got a really interesting phd and does mental health first aid training as well as a variety of other first aid training as well so um really keen to give people some advice or, or talk around some suggestions that they could they could use and put in place this week brilliant well i suppose we should say hello to the man himself dr aj from ajmh limited uh, thank you for joining us this evening aj can i call you aj yeah absolutely yeah, fine not thank just you dr aj every <laughs> time um so tell us a little bit about your mental health first aid training that you do Okay, so the Mental Health First Aid training is all the, all the courses are written and accredited by Mental Health First Aid England. So I'm an accredited trainer uh, and I deliver that through the company. 
Um, I have a background in physical first aid training, what most people will be familiar with, so first aid at work courses, uh, traditionally with St John Ambulance. Right. And, and you worked uh, with St John's Ambulance for a really long time, didn't you? Yes, volunteer. I was a volunteer. I joined when I was young, so over 40 years with wow. them, um, going out, putting on the very sexy outfit, and <laughs> touting the business <laughs> at weekends, um, <laughs> waiting for people to fall off of things mainly. Oh, gosh. And then, yeah, my PhD was all centred around women's lived experience of distress. Um, and quite often it was everyday distress. I didn't necessarily have a diagnosis of a mental health problem, um, but they were struggling with their life. Uh, but I was particularly interested in people that had decided to step outside that normal sort of medical model. So they'd been to the doctor and for whatever reason, uh, decided to try other things like complementary therapies or self-care and those sorts of things. Okay, well, we're going to find out more about Dr. AJ um, and our Time for Talk Day, which is coming up in the next couple of days after Lewis Capaldi now. This is someone you loved on MKFM. Lewis Capaldi and someone you loved on the MK Mental Health Hour this evening. Uh, we're talking about Time to Talk Day, which is coming up on the 6th of Feb- February. And we're joined in the studio, as always, by John from Arthritis Mental Health Support and Dr. AJ from AJMH Limited. Um, and we've just been hearing about um, about AJ's PhD and some of the great findings from that. Um, hearing about the difference between distress and diagnosis. And there there is a definite distinction between the two, isn't there? Yeah, well, I think especially with mental health uh, the world health organization diet like kind of suggests that mental health is uh, defined as uh, your state of mind so anything that um, impacts your state of mind so and how you deal with situations in day-to-day life so obviously if you can if you're in a good state of mind and you can deal with situations really really positively then you've got great mental health if anything starts then creeping in and impacting that then your mental health starts to suffer so Ultimately, it's not necessarily just in terms of time to talk day. It's not reaching out to tell people you've got a diagnosis or anything like that. You might not have one. You might not need one. But there might be something going on that is impacting your mental Mm. health and how you function day to day, um, which is what I found really interesting about AJ's uh, research during your PhD because it was around distress. So distress isn't isn't necessarily a diagnosis, but there's a variety of different things that can impact that and have a knock-on effect to someone's mental health. Yes, absolutely. And I think that was one of the things about the research for me was was trying to decide exactly what distress is. It's not very clearly defined. It's not very clearly defined. And it, and it took a lot of searching for me to find a definition that I was actually comfortable with using. Um, and in a way, the, the women that I interviewed uh, self-defined it because they were taking part in the research. So they decided that they were distressed. But you're absolutely right. They didn't all have a diagnosis of mm. anxiety or depression or whatever it might be. Some of them were just going through a rough time and really struggling with their well-being at that stage um, but the definition I came across that I did like was that um, something would be classed as distress if it has a profoundly negative impact on your mood and your ability to function mm. so, so we all feel down at, at, at different times and that's perfectly normal but if you're starting to feel really down uh, and if you are then starting to avoid things not going to family events taking days off sick then that's not a place to be uh, and even if you don't have a, a diagnosis you still should be seeking some help at that point and people might get used to doing that as well it might just be like oh yeah i'm not going to go there and and you become you just become accustomed to calling in sick or you Mm. become accustomed to not showing up or you know having excuses to go to different events or if it's going to distress you was it a, a a varied amount of time that people would have been under this kind of distress in in those kind of quotation marks Yes, because sometimes there might be uh, an underlying reason behind it. So there might be a, a precipitating factor uh, and bereavement was one of the common ones because obviously that's one of the, yeah, the yeah, hardest yeah. things that people have to deal with. Uh, and it's interesting that that you know sometimes bereavement is seen as, as a mental health condition, uh, whereas a lot of the people that I, that I spoke to resisted sort of that over-medicalization of what they saw uh, as, as everyday distress. Uh, and one of the women said that sometimes you're depressed because you bloody well got something to be depressed about. And she yeah, didn't yeah. like the idea that the doctors was trying to give her antidepressants when, as far as she was concerned, life events were just making her feel down uh, and taking a tablet wouldn't have, have changed that at all. And there are actually other other ways other than antidepressants and things that doctors can help to help people with being distressed and, and lots of other different mental health uh, kind of issues. You uh, work a couple of days at the College of Medicine 
medicine, don't you? And you were talking earlier uh, during that song about social prescribing. Yeah, so the College of Medicine is, is a national charity um, that is open to anyone to join, but it, it's getting the idea that we should look beyond pills and procedures and that when you go to the doctor, uh, you're not necessarily getting a prescription or being sent for surgery. And certainly distress is a really good example where there are lots of things that are out there uh, within the local community that might be beneficial for people and, and the College of Medicine has championed social prescribing. Uh, and John, you were saying that, that, that that's had an impact now on the NHS NHS and that there are now link yeah. workers available. <clears throat> yeah, so so I go to a few meetings with the NHS and work in the local uh, self care steering group and phenomenal people in the NHS and in other organisations and the NHS locally, well nationally, are now really focusing on social prescribing and using different um, ways to support people. So not necessarily focused on let's prescribe you some pills, let's you know, go down a really clinical route, but there's a lot of non-medical things that people can do, um, like whether it's walking or, mm. you know, the Parks Trust, I know, do a lot with people who are experiencing issues with their mental health to provide them spaces to get out into nature. And um, it has a massive impact, a really, really positive impact. So there's loads of routes that people can go down. So it's really interesting that that came out of your research. Yeah, and and, and um, it's important to have that. Obviously, it's also important to remember that there's no one size fits all. Uh, so for some people, having a diagnosis of a mental health condition is beneficial because mm. it kind of explains how they've been feeling and they feel mm. that there are maybe things that can be done for that. Uh, but it's not always helpful. And so in having those things that, that, that sound less medically and are less scary for people uh, is an important thing too. OK, yeah. well, we're going to be looking at this a little bit further after Dua Lipa's new rules, which plays for you next. The MK Mental Health Hour with 123 Internet Group. MKFM. Still love that from the weekend. It's Blinding Lights on MKFM. This is another MK Mental Health Hour with Leah. We're talking about Time to Talk Day, which is coming up on the 6th of February, a national campaign to encourage people to reach out. Um, and that's exactly what we're going to identify now about how and when you can approach somebody if you think they're seeming a little bit distressed. So, John, there are certain signs that you can look out for if somebody is uh, a little bit distressed, aren't there? Yeah, there's loads. And often we can probably tell that someone's a little bit off mm. or they're a bit quieter than usual but essentially what you're looking for whether it's somebody in your family whether it's someone uh, at work or just a friend um, you're looking for changes in characteristics so if they're acting like they don't normally act and AJ I think there's there's loads of different types and it kind of falls into different categories of signs that you can kind of look out for and pick up on yeah, so there might be physical things you notice, like mm. they're not taking care of their appearance, or there might be behavioural changes, like taking time off of work, uh, changes in personality, like you say, uh, and everybody's different. So someone who's very outgoing might become quite reserved, uh, but whereas someone who's normally not quite quite meek wouldn't uh, normally uh, speak up, might get quite irritable uh, and mm. bite people's heads off. So you're absolutely right, it's the change. There's quite an interesting exercise we do on the mental health first aid courses, where we get the students to try and match different different symptoms to different mental health diagnoses yeah and it's a really difficult task for them to do but at the end of it we take away the diagnosis because the point is a mental health first aider or anyone really shouldn't be able to be expected to diagnose mental health conditions yeah, yeah. but that's not the point is can they recognize distress and i think we all have the ability to do that it's really just recognizing it and then having the confidence to actually act and help someone and obviously there are going to be times where we're all a little bit stressed and, you know, maybe workload's a bit too much. But it's about those kind of ongoing periods where somebody is having that change in behaviour and you've got to kind of identify that. Yeah, so, and you're absolutely right, we all have bad days, mm. we all have stressful days. Uh, and, and again, it, stress in itself is not necessarily a bad thing and, no. in, and in some jobs people will thrive on that. But over a period of time that will start to take its toll and then you'll, you'll start to notice these changes. And, and like you were saying earlier, John, it is very much the fact that this is something that is quite normal but the person mm. might not realise that they're having the problem because yeah. it's on a spectrum. And so when does anxiety become something that you need to see seek help for uh, and again it's when it starts to really have that impact on your mood and and what you're able to do yeah and and 
quite often uh, if we're looking at approaching somebody in uh, for anything that we might have identified so any characteristics changes or we just know that that person's under distress um, there are certain things that we need to consider before we we do make that approach obviously everyone's an individual some people might respond really well to um, being approached about it but in some other cases we might need to be quite um, sensitive so really being quite factual and listing concerns AJ we spoke about making sure that it is factual so there might be some things that you've picked up on or these characteristics changes that it's, it's absolutely fine to approach someone about yeah and I think that's the key thing with starting that conversation you're absolutely right it, it's choosing the time mm. and that will vary from person to person or your relationship with them whether it's whether it's a work colleague uh, whether it's your boss whether whether it's a family member yeah. um, so choosing that time to have that conversation but you're right just 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 being very factual this is what I have noticed but then making sure that you have um, that care in nature and that you want to help them and for a lot of people just knowing that someone has noticed there's that they're going through a rough time and actually do want to help makes a massive difference yeah and does it vary about where you might have that conversation as well kind of the environment that you're doing that yeah massively we, we've had some scenarios where companies that we work with um, their managers have been kind of just approaching people at their desks in an open plan office and right. that might not be again it might work for some people but it in, in some respects, or in my personal case, I wouldn't really feel comfortable with no. that. So there's a variety of different things that you can do, um, whether that is going for a walk, or taking that person for a walk. Um, that sounds like a dog. Really, <laughs> that. But um, just going for a walk with them, mean. not taking yes. them for a walk. But suggesting a walk at lunch or something like that, and then just being prepared with you know what you want to uh, address with them. But there are other things like going for a coffee and we said AJ about it being might not be suitable for work but also again if it's at lunchtime with a busy and public environment that could be good it could be bad. Yes and, and you have to gauge it by the individual and like mm. say that that one-on-one -on -one conversation um, in, where you know you're not going to be disturbed for a lot of people will put them at their ease whereas a one-on-one -on -one conversation with their boss might put that put them on edge and whilst a, a coffee shop is a public place uh, it can actually be quite an anonymous place and people feel quite safe there so it is yeah. very much judging what works for that person. And part of the Time to Talk campaign is about asking twice because uh, we were talking AJ about the fact that if you came up to me and said you know how are you doing how are you doing today Leah and I'd be like yeah I'm fine but it's about asking twice to show that you you know are really interested to find out exactly how I'm feeling. Yes, and I think one of the issues is that is that these days we, we ask each other if we're all right all the time, mm. but it's we don't say it like that. It? Yeah, it's yeah. another way of saying good morning. It's yeah. like, you're right, Leah? You're right. Yeah, and the socially acceptable response is... Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, but if I then say to you, no, seriously, Leah, are you okay? Then I'm just showing some sort of intentionality that I am actually concerned about you, and I do want to know if you're okay. Mm. So it's quite important to kind of make sure you're asking twice and show that intention is there and that you've recognised that maybe that person is a little bit distressed. Um, well, we're going to be talking about whether you personally feel distressed and how maybe you can reach out uh, after we hear from James Arthur. This is Say You Won't Let Go on MKFM. James Arthur and Say You Won't Let Go on MKFM. So this MK Mental Health Hour, we've been discussing all about reaching out and if you've kind of understood and recognised that somebody that maybe you work with or a friend is feeling a little bit distressed, um, how you can approach them. And Dr. AJ, uh, we've been speaking about the various ways that you can kind of approach somebody but what if you do speak to somebody and say you know I, I I can kind of notice there's a change in your behavior and they go no no I'm absolutely fine I'm fine and they, they're not kind of ready to talk about it and they're not ready to identify it um what what do you do in that situation yeah I mean I think it's a key thing that you pointed out that that maybe they're just not ready at that point so it's not that they don't need help or don't want help but, but they might not be at that stage where they're, they're ready to accept help. We are getting better, but there is still very much a stigma around mental health for a lot of people. But it's just making sure that if, that if you've asked the question and you've asked it twice and people are absolutely adamant that they don't need help, that they know that the door is always open and they can come and see you at any point. And it would be, okay, well, that's fine, Leah. Um, but obviously you know that, that I am concerned about you because I care about you. So if at any stage you do want to talk to someone, you know where I am. And so that that helps break down some of those barriers moving forward because it might be at that stage that they haven't even identified in themselves they might think that they're doing absolutely fine and then it's only when somebody has
has identified actually they're they're a bit distressed that they need to go away and digest it themselves and acknowledge it before then coming back to you with that kind of open door yeah like like we discussed earlier the fact that anxiety is on that great big spectrum and they might actually be aware that it's having such an impact it's so and and then you mentioned this to them that you're absolutely right they need to go away and reflect and then then they might think, oh, actually, yeah, I do need some help. But when they do make that choice, they know they've got someone that they can reach out to, which is the important thing. Mm. And what are some of the other reasons that maybe people don't seek help? Um, I mean, traditionally, mental health problems have been seen as a bit of a weakness, which obviously we're much better now at knowing that, that, that we all have health uh, and mental health is just part of that and we can be unwell at any point. The research that I did for my PhD, uh, two themes that came out of it were, um, apart from the distress that the women were experiencing, is they also quite often felt shame and guilt. Mm. Uh, shame because they felt that in this day and age you should be able to go out, go to work, earn money, pay your bills pay your taxes and stand on your own two feet and if you couldn't do that for whatever reason then there was something inherently wrong with you and that, and that was very shameful You're failing in some sort of way yeah whereas yeah. actually they were just unwell as if they'd broken their leg mm. for example uh, but also guilt particularly for the women that had children because uh, their mental health problems were having an impact on their loved ones uh, they felt extremely bad and guilty about that but again it's not as if that they'd brought this on themselves it was just other circumstances or some Sometimes low mood for no apparent reason, which I think for some people is quite a difficult thing to, to, to deal with. So if someone was being persistent in I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, it might be that shame and guilt, but it also could be that they're just not recognising it. Right. And in some respects, by someone reaching out and being proactive and explaining what your concerns are and noticing that these these are uh, changes in their behavior that might actually be quite a relief to that person mm. that they've been fumbling through trying to manage but actually someone has identified that they do need a hand well we do have some great tips to share with you if you are feeling a little bit distressed and you're not quite sure how to reach out to somebody uh, we'll be discussing that after ed sheeran and camila cabello south of the border which is on the way for you right after this the mk mental health hour with one two three internet group mkfm Ed Sheeran, Camila Cabello, south of the border on MKFM. Good evening, it's Leah with you for another MK Mental Health Hour. Uh, tonight we are talking all about Time to Talk Day, a national campaign to encourage people to reach out. And we've just heard about how you can maybe reach out to somebody if you can notice uh, that they're a little bit distressed. And now we're going to talk about the ways that if you're maybe you're feeling a little bit distressed, there are certain ways um, that you can reach out. And there's, there's certain things that you can say and a certain way to say it, aren't there, John? Yeah, there's there's a couple of steps that you can go through and it's quite a big thing for people. Obviously, we've, we've talked about the vulnerabilities that are involved in it. So maybe so there's some shame there, there's some guilt there. And you've got to remember that people are going to be feeling vulnerable anyway because they're under distress. Yeah. So it's this is all kind of adding on to it. So this could be actually seen as, as quite a big event mm -hmm. um, coming up to having a conversation. So we've got to be really understanding of that. But... Um, trying to break it down into a, a simple process that someone can um, can go through in order to reach out and, and sort of the first step of that really is identifying who you can talk to so whether it's somebody at work whether it's someone in friends and family um, and and we kind of say that it, it it bottles down to someone that you trust it can be anybody but if you uh, if you trust them and obviously if it's sensitive and you are feeling vulnerable that's a, a good starting point to identify somebody um because aj i think that especially at work there are really good people that you can reach out to but also on the other hand there are probably unhelpful people mm. um that you can reach out to as well yes and i think i think people will come to realize that and they'll pick and choose who they talk to yeah and i think you know like i say we're getting a lot better at supporting mental health and mental health in the workplace and the businesses that are really making great strides are embedding well-being and mental health throughout the organization yeah so that individuals if they don't have a good relationship with their line manager maybe have a colleague that has a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of training they can go to and in in schools as well like schools have embedded this thing called a whole school approach and it's something that everyone has that, that blanket understanding of this is how we do it. So if 
in reality um it might be slightly different because personally you might have different relationships mm. but if you go to anyone if they're they're not free then someone should be able to help you out in in a similar way so you identify that person that you can trust and then how do you approach that person what what how do you start it what do you say yeah so we've we've said about aj not not necessarily focusing on a, a diagnosis because there's loads of different other routes that you can focus on and sometimes a diagnosis or focusing on those buzzwords like anxiety or depression might actually be unhelpful yes in and, some and, and, and they mean different things to different people exactly. and, and they will impact on different ways yeah. uh, just being open and honest enough to say look i'm, I'm struggling uh, and i need a bit of help uh, which again we're not always so good at doing but mm. actually you know we all go through those phases and even if you don't have someone to talk to there are like there are helplines aren't there where you can yeah, just pick yeah, up the yeah. phone and Samaritans for example would much rather talk to you when you're starting to struggle rather than when you've gone for like years not talking to anyone mm. and they're at the point where you're actually about to maybe take your own life they'd much rather talk to you sooner than that yeah absolutely and similar to the um, the December uh, not the the, the show in December that we did about depression Mm. um it was really looking at not specifically focusing on the symptoms because depression or anxiety they've got loads and loads of symptoms so it means different things to different people you might not experience all of those symptoms you only really need to uh, experience a handful for it to be having a massive impact on you so if you can try and think about what impact these things are having on you so if you are Um, struggling to go to social engagements if you are struggling to go to work or you're struggling with certain things at work try to keep the focus on those things that you do struggle with so the person you're speaking to has some um, guidance on what they can actually maybe support with rather than if you say I'm just feeling really sad it might not be something that they're equipped to be able to deal with so we need to kind of appreciate what the person uh, what we can expect from that person as well if they're not kind of clinically trained or anything like that exactly so important to kind of identify within yourself the things that you're struggling with so that when you go and have that conversation you can convey those kind of in a succinct way and yeah um, not all those kind of buzzwords that somebody that your friend at work might not know and not understand yeah so you you take it away from being about depression or anxiety and you get some support in place for the things that that is having an impact on Brilliant. Well, we've, as always, some fantastic tips uh, this evening. We're going to do a very quick roundup after Dua Lipa announces new rules on MKFM. Dua Lipa, new rules on MKFM. So tonight on the MK Mental Health Hour, we've been talking all about Time to Talk Day, uh, which is coming up on the 6th of Feb, a national campaign to encourage people to reach out. Um, and we've learned some fantastic things this evening, John. Just run us through uh, some of the things that we've talked about this evening. Yeah, absolutely. So if you are looking to reach out, remember, it's not necessarily if you're diagnosed with something or anything like that, you could just be under distress. If you're looking to approach someone quite proactively, then please consider the environment that you do that in. Um, You can list your concerns so that any changes in characteristics or behavior that you've noticed. And if they're not ready to talk about it, then set it up so that you're leaving the door open for them to come back when they're ready. Uh, If you're looking to reach out yourself, then identify someone that you trust, whether that's at work, whether it's family or friends. Um, Focus on what you struggle with. So focus on the things that you um, may have been dropping off for you or that you've been finding difficult to manage uh, and understand the other person's capability. So if they've not got a clinical background, understand you know you don't have too high expectations of what they can support you with and there is an expert guide about everything that we've been speaking about this evening which is going to be over and available on your website just remind us of what that is john yeah there's the guide and then people can refer themselves to us as well we have appointments within a week so uh, it's arthur ellis mhs.com brilliant and thank you so much for joining us this evening dr aj thank you uh, if people want to find out more about aj ajmh limited uh, how can people do that uh, yeah details of mental health training and mental health first aid courses are on the website ajmh.co.uk brilliant well thank you both for this evening and join us next sunday seven o'clock for another milton Keynes mental health hour the mk mental health hour with one two three internet group mkfm